welcome to go get it today we will see about very basic keys in rdbms and later we will learn about closure of attributes to know more about attributes relation and fds or functional dependencies i would strongly encourage to watch our videos shown at the top we will start with super keys an attribute or a combination of attribute is said to be a super key if and only if they derive all the attributes of the given relation it can be a simple or composite simple means a single attribute and composite means a combination of attributes now let's take an example for this super keys this example has been taken care or has been taken from the previous video which we have discussed already here we have listed the possible fds or the functional dependencies of the given relation here we'll find out the super keys as per the definition of the super key now here as the super key definition says that it is a co combination of attribute or a attribute which derive all the attributes of the given relation so here we have marked a set here a derives a a derives b a derives c that means this a derives all the attributes of the given relation another set is ab derives a ab derives b ab derives c again this is a set or it is a combination of attributes it makes a super key similarly here also you can notice ac derives b ac derives c ac derives a that means this combination a and c derives all the attributes of the given relation that is a b and c and finally we have abc it derives all the attributes a b and c so we have super keys four super keys in for this particular relation a ab ac and abc now the question arises here why don't we consider these given functional dependencies here again i would say please watch the previous video for better understanding we haven't considered this relation for example we can say that b derives a because this functional dependent set <coughs> is not valid for the for this given relation because here b does not uniquely identify a as you can see here for b we have 2 derives 1 and again for 2 derives 2 which is not unique that's why we haven't considered these set of functional dependencies for the calculation of super key now our next key is candidate key candidate key it is an attribute or it is a combination of an attribute where it derives all the attributes of the relation first and foremost condition it should be a minimal subset of the super key again it can be a simple candidate key or a composite candidate key now what does this minimal subset of a super key means now let's take one more example to justify the candidate key definition here we have considered one more example the same example with a relation having attributes a b and c for this given relation we calculated the super key as a ab ac and abc so we need to calculate the candidate key for this given set of super keys as the definition says it should be a minimal subset of the given super keys so you can see that a derives a a derives b a derives c that means it derives all the relations for all the super keys it derives all the attributes of the given relation now you can notice if i take a subset of ab say b p does not derive uniquely any of the uh, uh, like uh, any uh, all the attributes of the given relation similarly here c does not derive all the attributes of the given relation so we cannot take c let's take bc so again bc does not uniquely identify each attribute of the given relation so bc is also discarded we are left with only a so a uniquely identifies 
here a is a subset of the given super key that is ab here again a is the super key uh, sac candidate key or we can say the subset of the given candidate key and in this case also a is the subset of the abc part so what did we come to the conclusion that a is nothing but the candidate key as it is the minimal super key that means it is a subset of the given super keys i hope this clears the candidate key now comes one two more terminologies which are very much related to candidate key that is prime and non prime attributes the attributes which are present in a candidate key is a prime attribute that means a is a prime attribute so a is the candidate key for this given relation so a is a prime attribute and the attributes which are not present in the candidate key is non prime attribute very simple so a makes the prime attribute and rest of the attributes that is b and c makes the non prime attribute this prime and non prime attributes are of utmost importance in case of normalization and the uh, types of functional dependencies concept now next task is to calculate the closure of attribute now what do you mean by closure closure is nothing but it is a set of all the attributes of the given relation which is derived by the attribute or the attribute in action this uh, closure calculation is basically used to determine the candidate key of the given relation to determine the candidate key we can calculate the closure of each attribute of the given relation now let's take the example given here we have a relation with attributes a b c and d and these are the functional dependencies a derives b b derives c c derives d d derives a so this is a functional dependent set for the given relation r now we need to calculate the closure so if i say i need to calculate closure of uh, attribute a so it is basically denoted by a plus a suffix plus so we need to calculate whether a derives all the relation all the attributes of the given relation so here you can notice that a derives b so the closure contains the attributes a b now we will calculate the closure of a b again now a b derives a b is having b so b derives c again we can add c to the part a b c derives d d derives a so we can see here a plus gives a b c and d now let's calculate for b again you can see b derives c so b and c let's use the marker here so for b plus we will see b derives c that means b and c these are present in the closure set now c is a part of already present set so c derives d so we'll add d into the closure set and d derives a we'll add a so here you can see that a derives all the relation all the attributes of the given relation b derives all the attributes of the given relation now the definition says here if a closure contains all the attributes then it is a candidate key so in this example we can definitely say that a b c and d are individually a candidate key for the given relation r there are certain samples i have quoted here where uh, that is generally for practice here you have to calculate the candidate key i have given the answer also do practice and you can raise questions please raise out your questions i hope this video has make your doubts clear about the various keys used in rdbms that is super key and candidate key there is one more key that is called as foreign key we'll discuss that foreign key later thanks for listening keep watching